Hello, random stranger. I hope you're doing good wherever you are. And uh, look, if you're not, just come join me for another episode of Land of the Lustrous. So I really enjoyed the first episode with its super sharp animation and really cool fight choreography. Uh, We were introduced to a couple of the gems, including Foss, who is really just trying to find a way or her place in a society where your worth seems to be judged solely on where you fall on the hardness scale, which is a bit harsh and uh, actually kind of reminds me of our own world, like where it seems like the only indicators of your value as a person is like your external wealth or your career or how far you've climbed the success ladder, so to speak. Um, And look, all of that's overrated. There is so much more out there and so much more to humanity than just those things. Like I'm not saying wealth isn't important, but uh, yeah, in terms of valuing someone and someone's life, uh, it's definitely not the only thing. But uh, yeah, anyway, I digress. So we have Cinnabar, who I've pinned as an early favorite of mine. She's a a bit of a drama queen, but, you know, you can't really blame her. She's essentially an outcast who can't get near anyone or be touched by anyone because of the poison that's inherent in her body. Um, And that's really impacted her mentally so much so that she wants to be taken by the Lunarians and used, I guess, like a tool. But um, yeah, you can really tell that she does want someone to care about her. And I think that's where Foss steps in. So speaking of the Lunarians, we don't really know too much about them uh, other than the fact that they kind of melt like cheese when they get hacked with the sword. Uh, And they also have like an unhealthy obsession with the gems whom they have hunted to the point of near extinction. I'm already like super invested in the characters, particularly between Foss's pure heart optimism playing off of Cinnabar's just absolute dire view of the world and of her own self-worth. And I, look, it's only been one episode, so that's really hard to do in a series to get someone to to really like the characters right off the bat. Um so I, and I also like, I really like the other gems that we spent, what, like a max couple of minutes with. There's the Doctor, Rutil, uh, and the other one with the red hair. Uh, I think her name was, I wrote it down somewhere, Morga. And look, they're all just super stylish with their katanas and they're all super snarky with each other, which I am here for as well. So time seeing to reaction again, guys, and I'm going to count down in three, two, one, go. Oh, so we get a bit of lore. Nice. This is very evolutionary. Oh, this is the gem's origin story. I love this opening. Just, okay, we got to take note of any clues that might be in it. Okay, just see which gems we haven't seen so far. (laughs) 
Cinnabar. You're gonna be okay, girl. Oh, yep, there's definitely a few that we haven't seen. I kind of wonder if we're going to get backstories for each of them or if it will just be focused on Foss and Cinnabar. Diamond. Ugh, beautiful. Speaker. So maybe she's like the leader or something. It's transported into the spirit world. I just, I'm still getting used to the idea that they can just break, like their limbs will fall off and they're going to be absolutely fine. Just need a bit of glue and uh, they're all, they're all back to normal. Even that, like she literally could have just smashed there and she doesn't care because you can just get glued back together. So she's Jade, speaker Jade. She's forgetting that promise now because now she has to actually do it. That's why I don't make promises you can't keep. Mm-hmm. I guess he's kind of a father figure for them, but uh, he does seem to be a little bit aloof. I wonder if some kind of twist that involves the sensei. <laughs> the shoulders. Brutal. <laughs> Just... She's got the evil doctor act all down pat. And cleavage. Okay. Consent, guys. Consent. Obviously, consent is not a thing in Retail's vocabulary. <laughs> oh, so everyone is like that with her. Which one is Diamond? So she's only second in command. Okay, so we haven't met the toughest gem of them yet. Is it diamond? 
Oh, diamond's the nice one. She's so sparkly. Hmm. Ah, uh, it's a three and a halfness self esteem issues coming out. Oh, she's she's ten. Does that mean she's the hardest out of all of them then? But she's also the nicest. That's a nice juxtaposition. <laughs> she so she seems to be like the only one who kind of treats Foss with some semblance of, you know, Genuine decency. Bought. Way too soft. But soft isn't necessarily a weakness. Oh, okay. I was like, what? Where'd the nice person go? Okay, so they always take the same form. Oh, that was a nice move. Okay, something's wrong. So it can't, it can only do so much. So Jade is a seven. Uh, okay, this is like the tough boss bitch. <laughs> that must be bought. Okay, so clearly Dyer is 
either infatuated or completely idolizes this gem. <laughs> Oh. So I guess they're always together. So they're both diamonds. Mm, so sh she's the strongest, but also probably the most hard ass. This is this is a tough hierarchy to to I guess climb. And the thing is, you can't really do anything about it because you you, you don't have a choice in your composition. No, that's not true. Whoa, this that's some complicated relationship dynamics. There is no word. Oh. She Did she just pull her arm off? No, okay, no, she just pulled the glove off, okay. Oh. Oh, still. Don't yell at her. Okay, obviously there's some kind of tough love going on here, but she's expressing it in the wrong way. <laughs> Fast, I don't know what you're doing, but uh, I love you. But man, <laughs> these things and they just keep coming. That's like the sense I said on F one. Oh, they're heading straight for the headquarters. He's meditating.
<laughs> That's not Foss's fault, though. Don't put that on a... Sound like a giant seashell. This show, it's got some super different, weird, fantastical ideas just simmering through the plot. Yeah, it wasn't her fault. <laughs> uh, so I guess because Bot is always there, Daya just always feels like she never has an opportunity to prove herself. It just seems like everyone has issues with their self-worth, just in different ways. I'm sure Bot has some too. <laughs> also all they did was just drop off the shell that can't be good news Oh no. Oh, I don't like snails. They are delicious though. In like garlic sauce. Did it just swallow her whole? So it, uh, it, it melts, it melts gems. Oh no. This is very different to shattering though. It's completely melting her. That is awful. I think she can hear her, but she just can't answer. Oh, her hair, it just... Well, I guess that's one way to do it and probably more efficient. Mm. Yeah, she's she's totally disintegrated at this point. But yet they're still sentient, so Oh, she wants Cinnabar. Oh no, she She's thinking of Cinnabar. She's totally whipped, but yeah, you got to get yourself out there first.
That's it. Okay, so uh, Foss is gone. I mean, in the sense that she is now a a melted piece of blob somewhere in the stomach of a snail. Okay, so this episode we got a little bit more of the lore around how the gems came to be. And, like, I've got to watch it again, but my understanding is that basically aliens in the form of suns and moons came to the world and all the life on Earth had to basically run away into the sea. And from those life forms that sunk to the bottom over time and with lots of pressure and chemistry and all of that sciencey stuff that I'm really bad at, that is sort of how the gems came into being. Um, so that was cool to learn. Uh, uh, a big focus of this episode was on Diamond and Bort. So the, the two diamonds who are paired together. And their conflict is a really interesting one because it's all about how Bort never allows Dyer to really grow into their own and... They're just always being protective or maybe even overprotective. So Dyer's maybe not as physically strong as Bort, even though, interestingly enough, they, they both rate, I think, as a 10 on the Mo scale. But Dyer has is really creative in how they fight with the Lunarians. And at the same time, obviously, they have this huge admiration for Bort but kind of also hates Bort for stopping her from f- from developing a potential uh, which is such a, a common conflict I think between you know two friends or you know a mentor and a, a trainee or something so I kind of wonder what the history is between those two and I love how the show creates tension between different characters that that is so nuanced so like the tension between Daya and Bort is very different to the tension that's between Foss and Cinnabar but it kind of all revolves around that very human fear of not being good enough and not meeting certain expectations that are placed on you and what else uh, yes, so how could I forget the giant escargot that was plunked down to the school and basically vacuumed up Foss and completely digested her? Uh, I have no idea how she's going to get out of that because that is some pretty strong stomach acid that she's got to overcome. Uh, and pretty scary as well now that I think about it because she was conscious and so could sort of hear what everyone around her was saying to her but she couldn't respond because when you have no body you can't interact with the world around you so yeah I mean that brings up some interesting questions around do you need a physical body to exist or is the consciousness where the soul lives is it sort of a bit of both um yeah and you can probably tell it is way too late here to get into those kinds of questions. But uh, yeah, they're just kind of floating around there and this show does a really good job of sort of digging into those deeper questions. So all I have left to say is I'm looking forward to the next one, just to see how Foss can manage to unmelt herself. So uh, yeah, until then.